and take it if you want it. Come and take it if you think you can. Come and take it, but I warn you, you'll have to pry it from my cold dick. All right, guys. So we're back with part four of our bug out bag building kit. So this option, we're gonna talk about all the bigger items that don't fit in those nice little mini kit pouches that I put together for all my other things that I believe I'm gonna need or that I want to have in my uh, bug out bag. So the first thing we're gonna talk about here is water. Now, there's really two schools of thought on this concept. The first is you should carry at least enough water for 72 hours. Second concept is have some water, but acquire water as you go and as you need it. Now, that's going to be very dependent on where and what part of the country you live in. Here in Arizona, if I get outside a city, water is harder to find. If you live back east in the Midwest, you know, in the upper northeast, streams water rainfall very plentiful so it's not the end of the world if you don't carry a lot of water the problem with carrying a good deal of water is it's very heavy so to have 72 hours worth of water which is about a gallon a day the gallon per person per day you're looking at about five pounds this is a 72 hour emergency water kit there are 12 of these packets um, four per day. This is for one person. So this would be just for me. This is very heavy. This is about five pounds of water. So add that into your already the weight of your bug out bag. You've just added five more pounds you have to schlep. Now, where I happen to live in a metropolitan area, water is probably not going to be as scarce as if you lived out in the middle of nowhere. So I've kind of come to the conclusion that from my system, I'm going to carry one gallon of water. So I have, I'm going to have four of these in my bag. That's about one gallon. That will last me one day if I have no other source. But I'm going to acquire water as I go. So I'm going to add weight to the bag as I go, but I want to keep the bag as light as possible to start with. Because once I'm bugging out, I may be bugging out alone, but I'm sure within a few hours or a few, you know, a day or so, I'm probably going to be linking up with some of the guys that I know are like me and that have their shit together. And we already have our plans on if it goes down, where we're going, where we're meeting and who's bringing what. So just with that said, I've opted to not carry as much water on my person as I probably would if I was going to be by myself and no one was going to be with me or if I was lost or if I had to go through the desert alone, then I would want more water on me. But because the way we've prepped and the scenarios we've run, we'll be meeting up as specifically at a place where we know water is going to be available to us where we can load up there and then go especially if we have a vehicle that's still working or have access to a vehicle we can load up more water and then go so for my kit the first thing in my water aspect of my kit is i will have four of these in my bag i have them uh, just like this actually the four that are in my bag i didn't bother pulling them out this is just some extras that I have that go in my larger bug out kit. If I would be bugging out in my car, this would be going in a uh, Tupperware, the big, uh, big heavy tote, and these would be in there. But I have four of these. They're uh, side by side, and they're uh, vacuum sealed so that the packaging is as tiny and as unspace consuming as possible. So when it comes to water, this is the first thing, having some drinking water. This is the Datrex brand. Uh, you can buy this 72 hour water kit for, I think it's about 10 bucks. And it comes in these nice thick Mylar bags that's pre, uh, pre-packaged for you. Just tear up there and you drink. So I've used these before. They don't taste bad at all. Um, they expire, but I mean, the expiration date on this specific set is until 2017, according to them. So, I mean, it's only 2013 now, so I've got another five years uh, that I don't need to worry about this water. And the fact that these are not clear and that this is uh, covered and coated is going to keep anything from getting in there or spoiling my water. So, that's the first thing, carrying water. 
Now, let's get to the concept of acquiring water. Now, if acquire, we're gonna acquire water, I have a whole, whole setup for how we would acquire water. And it looks something like this. So this is my water purification kit. This is an MSR water purifier. So open this bad boy up. Now I have a whole bunch of other things shoved in here with it. As you can see, the first thing we have is a, a Frontier emergency water filter straw. You stick the straw in that end, you stick that end in the water and you drink and whatever, even if it's dirty or stale or stagnant water, the water that you suck up through the straw is filtered through here and gives you nice, clean, usable water. I've used these when I've been camping before. They work really well. I've never gotten sick using one. You can get these for about 10 bucks on Amazon uh, or more or other places, but about $10 is about the going price for these things pretty much anywhere. I just put it in a little Ziploc baggie so that it stayed together and I didn't lose it. Um, but this gives you about, I think it's 20, 20 or 22 gallons of filtration in this little filter. So 22 gallons on one person using it, that's, that's definitely gonna get your mileage out of that. So about $10, having one of these is really nice. So moving on. The next item in here is actually a platypus 34 ounce or one liter uh, canteen. And these are really nice. They're uh, heavy, thick mylar. Uh, they fold up so you can uh, not use a lot of space when you're carrying it, but if you need it, you fill it up and you've got a nice thick canteen that you can take with you and fill up from your clean water. Now you're like, well, how am I gonna get the water in there? Okay, this one you're gonna need to have a purified water source to pour into it. I don't, there's not any way to connect this to any type of filter that I found so far, but because of the size and weight of it, I thought it was a good idea to have this in my kit. Now this is, again, you're gonna have to fill this from clean water to start with. Now this option, however, this is the Nalgene 96 ounce water canteen. It's got a nice carry handle here, big mouth top, it's thick mylar, uh, it's made by Nalgene so you know you can trust it. This has a really nice big open uh, mouth uh, lid on it that will connect directly to the bottom of my water f uh, filter. So let's actually get the filter out. So this is everything that comes in the filter. You get the information on how to use it. You've got your, your tubing and you've got a scrub pad to clean up with if you need to. So what you do is you connect the, this end of the tube right here to this little port and this end you throw in your water, the whatever water you have there. And then you connect this bottle to the bottom of this. You just literally unscrew this piece right here and screw that right onto the bottom of it. And then you simply just pump your water through. And now these you can get like, I think it's, I forget how many gallons. Um, I'll annotate it when I put the video up, how many gallons you get. But again, this is a really nice one. It comes with replaceable filters. I don't keep a replaceable filter in my bug out bag specifically because the filter is big and it's gonna be another big piece to put with this. This thing's already pretty big to start with. So again, I chose this one because of the price. Now there's the Ketadyne ones and other ones that are a little more compact than this, but they're a lot more expensive that I saw. This one was about, this one was like 60 or $70. I got it on sale for about 60 bucks, I think. And uh, I've used, I have two of them. I have one that I use when I go camping and stuff. And this one I've never used, it's brand new. Uh, specifically, I've run just some clean water through it just to clean the filter, you know, if anything was in there when they manufactured it, just to clean the filter out. Uh, but I believe um, you get a lot of, you get a lot of life on these bad boys. So that's how I would be filtering or purifying my water to fill my canteen with. Well, you're saying, well, what about water filtration tablets and all those other things that people carry? Well, those are great, but that's not the system I've chosen to go with. I'm willing to take a little more weight in my bug out bag because I would rather have a filter system than just some water tablets. Now you can definitely have those, the little tiny uh, 
tablet bottles, you can use those, they're great. Um, getting back to water filtering, this is another option. This is not the same straw. This is, um, again, a Frontier Emergence straw. This is an Aquamira version. This doesn't have a flexi straw, same tube, longer straw concept. The other one, this one here that I showed you, this is about 22 gallons um, for the filter usage. This one is a 30 gallon filter usage. So, and this one I picked up off Amazon for about the same price. They're both about $10 a piece. So, multiple options. This one's just a new one I picked up to have in storage if I should ever need an extra. Now, let's get that out of the way. So, uh, again, back to redundancy. We've got more Gatorade uh, powder, and we also have some, there's also Gatorade, but the Propel Calcium calcium antioxidants this is a i think just a lemon flavored and this is the glacier ice one this is just the flavors they had when i went they're okay i've used them before but again this also rides in here so again we're going back to redundancy this will help you replace electrolytes if you're hot sweating you're out in the sun a lot you can add this into your water and this will give you some extra electrolytes added in that your body desperately needs if you're out in the sun a lot like okay Greg but what happens if all that breaks down and I have to boil my water okay I keep this just a standard canteen cup and this way I could put water in this build my fire set that right in the fire if I even want to drop it right into the coals let that bad boy boil I'll be of course wearing gloves when I would pick this up pick this up I can make my soup in there I can do my cooking in here as well I can boil my water in here this is a heavy duty canteen cup. Picked this up at a uh, Army Navy surplus store here in Phoenix. I think I paid all of $3 on this. Heavy duty, not gonna bend on you. Not too big, not too heavy, but it's good. You can just slide it in my bag. I stuff a whole bunch of stuff in here, so I use it as a, a holder while it's in my bug out bag and it stores other things in it while I'm moving. So. All in all, this is my water filtration, guys. So I've got so all in all, there's water filtration, guys. These are the options I have. Again, all this stuff will be in the uh, description below. Uh, exactly what it is, what um, the item numbers are on them. So again, we got the Nalgene Canteen, a platypus. We've got our Gatorade mixes, we've got our big water filter, we've got our little water filter straw, and we've got our canteen cup for boiling and cooking in. So just a quick add on there guys, you can see I can package this down really far. Unfortunately, this doesn't quite fit in here as a storage option, but all the other things fit nice into the, the baggie that the uh, water filter came in. So I've got the smaller canteen, the Gatorade, the mini straw, and all the components for my filter in there nice and nice as I throw that over. This uh, canteen, the Nalgene canteen, it folds down pretty small, pretty inconspicuous. You can just slide it down the side of your pack. And then again, this just rides in the bottom and it's full of stuff in my pack as it is, so. All right, so this is take four on the food concept for my bug out bag. Let's see, take ones and two were ruined by my cell phone ringing. Take three, I needed to take a sip of water and then choked on the water. And on top of that, the minute I was choking, my cat tried to jump in my lap and completely nutshotted me with their, its entire weight. So, now that I've recovered, let's try this again. Food. So, in my bug out bag, I have a, what I deem is going to be about 72 hours worth of food for myself. Um, I have kept it trying to the 72 hour concept for water and for food because hopefully after 72 hours I would be able to establish myself somewhere, uh, acquire food, hunt for food, catch or trap small game, maybe do a little fishing for some fish, whatnot. But I went with a couple of options here. This is what is in my current bug out bag. There's actually, I have three of these uh, Mountain House um, freeze dried uh, food bags in there. Uh, one of them's over there on the floor, it just didn't quite stack so nicely. Um, but all three of them are actually the chicken salad variety. So you can see, there's another one here, I'll just move it out of the way for now. 
But uh, I went specifically with this one. Granted, I, I love chicken salad, which is a bonus, and I've made I ate one of these already when I first tried it. And their chicken salad is pretty bomb. I mean, this is chunks of creamy chicken, red onions, cranberries, and pumpkin seeds in here. It's pretty badass. The reason I really, really like this one is you can see right here. Just add cold water. I don't have to heat or boil any water to make my food. A lot of these dehydrated foods, you need hot water. So the fact that this is a cold water only additive um, is really nice because I can just literally pour water out of my canteen or tear open one of those little uh, water packets that I showed you that are right here and dump this in, mix it up with uh, the Luxan spoon or my knife that you know I've showed you a couple of now, seal it back up, leave it sit for 10 minutes and then I can just bust it open and get my grub on. You know, it says, you know, fill your tortilla, whatever. I'm not going to carry tortillas. I'm just literally going to spoon it right out of the bag. And the nice thing about this is, is this is two servings. So I can have lunch and dinner on this. So right here, that's four servings. There's another one over there on the floor. So I have six servings right there. So that's going to cover me three days, lunch and dinner. Breakfast, you're like, okay, well, I went with something that's pretty healthy that have good amount of protein in it and I really like Cliff Bars so I have four of them so that would be breakfast 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 and I could have one later if I really got hungry one day so that's what I went with food so I have three Mountain House packets and four Cliff Bars in my bag that is going to cover me for 72 hours it is enough food I promise you if you guys go and get one of these this will this made four large sandwiches worth of chicken salad. I mean, I'm talking, you know, full-size piece of the bread, nicely thick, uh, thickly uh, packed into the bread, and I made four big sandwiches out of one of these. I could eat two of them. Really, I, could have, I was able to eat like one and a half because I filled me up so much. So this is really two people's worth in one package. And these run for about five to six dollars. I've seen them for about five twenty-five anywhere to about six fifty. You can catch them on sale. I really like this one. They have really long shelf lives. You don't need hot water, which I think is a huge bonus. Now we can also take a look at something like this one. This is the long grain and wild rice pilaf one. This one, you need hot water, so you're going to have to go through all the energy of making a fire, boiling your water, putting it in here, and then waiting. So, not only do you only get 6 grams of protein in that one, this one is 18 per serving. So, and I believe, how many servings are in here? This has 4 servings, so that's 18 grams, so that's almost 80 grams of protein in, that whole, in this whole pack. So that's a lot of protein, that's going to keep you going, guys. So that's what I keep in my bug out bag for food. So like I said, I wanna kinda of go over the pros and cons of having to use hot water versus cold water. Um, the reason I, like I said, I really prefer to go with the cold water um, options because again, if you're gonna to have to use, do, use one of these, you're gonna to have to make hot water. So you're gonna to have to collect all the wood for your fire, you have to spend the time to get your fire started, you're gonna to have to take the time to boil the water, and on a little fire, boiling water could take 20 minutes sometimes to boil water. So just to eat, you could be looking at anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes worth of prep time just to get boiling water to put in here, then to have to wait another eight to 10 minutes for this. So it could take you almost an hour to cook one of these. And if you're bugging out and you're on the go, you don't have an hour to waste time cooking food. So again, that's why I think a cold water option is going to be much more beneficial because I could just pour water in here, stir it up, seal it up, stick it in my back in my bag, keep on going, and about 10, 15 minutes later, I could stop, pull out my fork, pull out my bat, my food here, and get my grub on. So no effort a lot of effort. So that's something you definitely want to think about when you're choosing what type of food to put in your bag. Now, like I said, there are other options other than just Mountain House, of course. So this is another option. This is actually a small company here in Chandler. Uh, 
those of you that have been watching my channel, you know Mr. Knife Guy. I buy a lot of knives from him. He's donated a lot of knives to the project here. Uh, this is the other half of his company called Foodwise, and they do freeze-dried foods, and they make their own packed foods. So this is a chicken noodle soup organic meal. So everything they do is organic better than organic foods in their packs. So it's really nice. The only bad thing about this, and I keep harping on this to him, is to not super load the bottom of this and to make it thin and long the whole way. They super load these things sometimes and I'm like, don't do that. It doesn't pack well as I shake the camera. But this is another option. A third option is the Wise Food Company. The Southwest Beans and Rice. Dude, these are friggin' ridiculous. I love these. But again, hot water. Four servings in here. I believe this one has... I think this one is also... This is a two serving. This is a four serving. That's a four serving. But these go for like three or four dollars where he sells them. As opposed to these that go for much more. So... Here are some food options there. If you don't want to do freeze-dried foods, which I really advise you would should consider, you can go with something like these. These are pretty, like keep bouncing the camera. These are pretty good, um, ready in seven minutes. It is kind of hard to make these in the bag. I have tried. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, doesn't work quite so well, but you would really need to go to more like your cooking canteen um, cup there to make those. But again, that's another option. These are also great options for storing for long term. So these have a relatively long shelf life because this is actually like a flash frozen or semi cooked frozen food. If you didn't want to go with something like that, you could opt for canned food. So here we have a little chicken of the sea. Uh, canned food. You would need your P38 can opener or P51 can opener, whichever one you like, to get this open with because I highly doubt you're going to be bugging out with a regular sized can opener. Or you could do the old uh, scratch it on the hard top out there to get it to pop open. I did that once. I had a lot of rocks in my food, but whatever. If you didn't want to go with uh, canned, you could go with something like these. These are little ready to eat meals. You just peel off the plastic on the top and you get your grub on. These are really good. I use them for lunches at work a lot. Just throw one of these in my bag when I'm heading out. Um, super easy. Just bust it out. Bust out your spoon. So here's some other options. So that, these, or these. So this is what I have option wise for food. If you didn't want to go with something like this and you don't care about taste, you could always go with something like this. This is the Daytrex, um, how much is this one? This is the 3600 kilocalorie ration pack. It's 18 bars of concentrated food. Dude, these things taste like crap. I'm sorry, they do, they don't taste good. I just took some uh, blue painter's tape and wrapped it around here because it's got sharp edges coming off and I didn't want it cutting into anything else. So just some simple blue painter's tape wrapped there. You're supposed to eat uh, one bar every six hours per person, eat in small pieces and chew well. Okay, it's heavy, not gonna lie. This thing is a freaking brick. But if you don't want to do any of these, you could always go with that option. So, but like I said, this is the option I've gone with. I've gone with three of these chicken salad uh, packs and uh, four Cliff Bars. This way I can go for breakfast and lunch and dinner. This will cover me for three days. Not gonna be any frills, not gonna be any extras, but it's small, condensed, it's lightweight, it's easy to pack and carry, and it's not gonna get in the way of me having other things that I deem necessary in my bug out bag. All right, so that's the food option. Let's move along. All right, guys, moving right along here. The next thing we're going to talk about is shelter. So this is a eight foot by 10 foot tarp. It is probably a relatively light to medium thickness tarp. Uh, I picked this up off of Amazon. I think I paid a whopping six, seven dollars for this. 
but it's eight feet by 10 feet. Uh, you have kind of just like an OD green uh, side in here, and then you have a old style woodland multi-cam on the outside. The nice thing about this is it's grommeted all the way along the edges so you can tie it down, uh, put some stakes in it to uh, make a, uh, a triangle tent out of, or you literally, if all else fails, you can just wrap yourself up in this and curl up against a tree and go to sleep if you had to, or get up under something. So this is the option. This is really simple. This is what I chose to go with. Um, this is just, it's a nice, simple tent that I can make out of this using paracord and um, some tent stakes, which I have. I didn't bother dragging the tent stakes out there, just, you know, cheap little metal tent stakes that don't weigh anything. You run a piece of string between two trees or between two poles that you can make or find or whatever you gotta do. Throw it over the top, create your A-frame, your A uh, triangle shape and then stake these edges down and get up in there and go to sleep. It'll get you out of the rain. It'll get you out of the sun. It'll work really well. This is very thin. It's not super thick. It compresses down to about an inch thick. I know I hit the camera again. I keep doing it. Compress down to about an inch thick. This rides standing straight up in my bug out bag, basically up backing up to the back of the pack that hits my back and everything else goes in front of it. So it keeps it nice and compressed. I haven't used this specific one before to make a shelter with. This one is new and it's clean, so I will have it in my bag. I have another one very similar to this, not this multi-cam that I have used before in a pinch and it works really well. Also, you can use this to cover your gear or camouflage your gear if you need to leave your pack somewhere. You can wrap it up in that. If it's raining really bad, you can just flop this out, cover you and your pack with it and continue walking using it as almost like a, a coat covering. So that's the option I've personally chosen to go with is just a simple eight by 10 foot tarp. Now there are a bunch of other options you can use. Uh, you could go with something like this. This is a mini survival tent. I picked this up at REI for I think about $12. Um, it's compact, it compresses down in this nice little Ziploc baggie. It's about eight feet by 10 feet, similar size to that other one. It's very, very thin material, very thin. It does have rope in here, it has about 20 feet of a really cheap rope in here. In a pinch, you could use this. If you really wanna save on size and weight, this might be an option. But again, the problem with this is, it is bright friggin' orange. If you're trying to be found, great option. If you're trying to evade, not a great option, but this is another option if you don't want a big tarp like I've chosen. A simple little survival tent. If all else fails and you don't have any other option and you don't have any of these in here, you can go with this. That is five uh, large, heavy duty, three millimeter thick Mylar outdoor lawn and garden trash bags and I rolled them up nicely. I just put a simple zip tie on one side to keep them in uh, all together, to not take up any space. They weigh literally nothing. They take up no space. You could use those to build a shelter with. You could cut one open and sling it over a piece of rope and get up under there and get out of the sun, get out of the uh, rain and wind. If you really had to in a pinch, you could do that. Also, the nice thing about this is you can use this as bedding. You can take one of these bags, fill it up with dead leaves and pine needles on the ground, or fill it up with anything you can find and create a nice cushion between the ground and your body so you don't lose heat while you're sleeping on the ground because the ground is colder than you are. So that's another option. A last resort option would be something like these. This is just a mini survival blanket. It's the Mylar blankets that everyone shows you. It's got the silver on the inside, the orange on the outside. It's got a whole bunch of survival techniques all over the thing that you could read once you've opened it if you're bored. This can keep you out of the, uh, the cold. It can help shelter you. It can help keep your body heat into you by not letting it out. Or you could go with something as simple as this very cheap Ozark Trails rain poncho, hooded poncho. Super thin material, one size fits all poncho. 
you pull it out, you throw it over you and your pack, and you keep trekking along in the snow, sludge, or rain, or whatever. So that's another option. You could use both of these as a uh, sleeping option. You could use one of these to lay on the ground and it'll keep you off the ground itself. You could lay on this and then wrap yourself in this to keep from losing body heat at night and it'll help keep you a little warmer. Again, guys, remember we're bugging out. It's not gonna be comfortable. It's gotta keep you alive. So there it is, guys. Those are my options for shelter. Oddly enough, all of this stuff except this are in my bug out bag already. I keep all these items in there. I actually have two of the Mylar space blankets in my bag. I have the plastic trash bags, two space blankets, a hooded poncho, and my eight by 10 foot tarp. So that is how I would shelter myself in a bug out scenario. This does not take up much size and weight at all. I have a really nice set up places for in my bag for all these items. So they work for me and they might work for you. So like I said, always let me know if you have another option that might be great, put it in the comments, let me know. Again, everything we've talked about will be in the comments, uh, in the uh, description below the video, so. All right guys, so the last thing we're gonna go over in video number four here is the additional items that don't fit in my mini kits. So like I said, we've talked about all the mini kits previously. Now we're talking about the items that are bigger. They're not fitting in a little mini kit, but they're good to have and I like them and I pack them in and they're worthwhile. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is our little mini survival radio. Let's kind of zoom in a little so I don't have to hold this up. This is the Eton or Eton Microlink FR160. I really absolutely love this little guy. Uh, you can pick this up off of Amazon. I got this for about $25, I believe. So this is a great little survival radio. I did use the rubber bands just to keep the uh, little lanyard and the antenna from getting pulled off or caught on anything and breaking. So let's just kind of go over the features as this has. The first thing, we'll look at the top. We can see we have a button a solar power panel and our little antenna. So this button right here operates this three LED light on the front. See. I think it's dead right now. So we'll get to how you power charge this. So again, we have the button on top that runs the flashlight. We have a solar panel here that when we're outside, we can just set this out in the sun and it will charge the battery. We have the antenna for getting reception on our AM FM radios. We also have seven uh, weather channel band options in this radio, which are really, really nice. And then on the back here, we have our charging handle. So I'll show you this. Let me zoom out a little. So we'll just wind this guy up. Oh, there it goes. Turn the light off. Just get this guy going. Makes this really awesome charging wind sound. All right, so we'll just do a little quick wind and put that back on there, just so you can see that there's our light option. And then we will turn the radio on. We'll do a little, little listen in here, Let's see what we got. This is the volume button right here, and this is the uh, tuner. So let's see. So, little FM talk radio. Oh, there we go. Little white stripes for you. All right, not bad. So you can see, it's pretty loud. So, that's just a little demonstration of how this little radio works. I really dig this. It's very compact, guys. Now, there's one other feature I want to go on, uh, talk about. On the back here, we have this little port. You can open that up, and we have a headphone jack 
and a USB port. So you can actually plug your USB chargeable items into this port, so your iPhone, your iPads, most normal phones have a USB connection on the other end of the charging cables. Plug that right in here, you can use this out in the sun, keep your items charged up so we can keep our cell phone charged so that we can use our apps, you know, our survival apps that we have on the cell phone. It has a nice little lanyard. Uh, this way if you're walking with it, you can just kind of stick it around your hand here. So this way if you drop it, you can keep it in your hand. This little guy is pretty rugged. I have another one that uh, I use for just regular camping. It's really awesome. It's been beaten to holy Jesus, and it works still. It's great to be able to take it out there, throw up that in the thing, throw up the uh, antenna and have some tunage while we're cooking our dinner, hanging out. So, but this is a really nice option. They do come in red. Uh, if you want the red version, you can get it. I just went for the all black version. I liked it. So that is our emergency radio that we have in our kit. Next up, we have an additional headlamp. If you saw my prepper finds video that I found these at uh, Costco, this came in a three pack for $9. So not the brightest thing in the world, but if I need a little headlamp, it's got a strobe on it. It's got a low and high, but if I need a headlamp and I want to throw it on my head, I can do some work. Or if I'm with someone and we're doing some uh, butch crafting at night or dealing with some uh, firewood, trying to get a fire started and the sun's already gone down, this is a really nice option. If my first one breaks, I can go to my backup. If I'm with someone, I can loan this to them and they can continue helping me get things set up. So redundancy guys, a second headlamp. Next up, this is my main flashlight. Uh, if you've ever seen my reviews, I have a review up of the LumaForce LF1. I think this is a really great light. 320 lumens, super high spot beam. Uh, runs on two CR123 batteries. I have extras in my pack, you saw those earlier. I actually have more than the two I've added. Uh, about eight so far into the kit just to have more options. This does have the tactical crenulated bezel. If you needed to crunk a dude, you could do so. Uh, push button tail cap. This is only a single mode. There are a five mode option, which is low, medium, high, strobe, SOS. Uh, I could do without that. Um, the little light that I have uh, on me that I carry in my pocket every day, uh, my Olight T10 has the five mode with the strobe and the um, SOS. So that light's always in my pocket. So that's another light I have that I can do that with this is going to be really bright this is going to be if we're in a dark area going through a building with no lighting this is going to really throw a high beam illuminate the area keep us safe from tripping or running or stepping in anything that could injure us so this is my main light so this is the third light in my system you saw the first light was in my communication bag my second light is always in my pocket if i have my clothes on which i do normally unless I'm sleeping at night, maybe. Uh, I have that light and then I have this light as well. So three lights in my kit, hand flashlights, two headlamps, three hand flashlights. So moving on, next item, we have 200 feet of paracord. Uh, two different brands, this is Rothko, this is GI Plus, type three commercial paracord, 550 paracord on both. Works really well. Certified U.S. government contractor makes this one. These are also made by a certified U.S. government contractor. 100 foot each. I have a black one and then I have a desert tactical tan or a camo one. Um, so this one I like simply for that. I don't really care that it's camo. Um, you can see that though. It's got a couple different browns in it. Um, the reason I like this one is it's actually, because it's got multiple uh, threads in the, uh, the coil, it actually is a thicker uh, piece of 550 cord than just this regular black because of the multiple colors in here. It makes the outer um, casing of the 550 cord uh, a little bit thicker than the regular plain one color ones. So this is kind of just a knife option. You could use this if you need to hang a tent, use it to hang your tarp with. This is gonna be a little bit thicker, maybe give you a little bit more strength than your regular 550 cord. 
or not, I don't know, just how I think it might. But again, I have 200 feet of it. This way, if I'm with someone and we have to split up or you know, if I lose one of these for some reason, I've got a spare and I always have extra paracord. You can do a zillion things with paracord. So, paracord. Next up is gloves. Now there are two types of gloves I think you need to have in your kit. The first type, I believe, is a quality pair of leather work gloves. Um, these aren't really white, if that's how they're coming across. They're kind of just like a, a light tan color. Uh, Pick these up at Lowe's. I think they were a whopping $10, $12. But they're a good, relatively thick pair of leather work gloves. If you're gonna be doing any uh, wood cutting or bush crafting, these are kind of what you're gonna want. You're not gonna want something like a tactical glove. You're gonna want a good leather work glove. This way you save your hands, because I'll tell you right now, you get a freaking splinter in your hands and you can't get it out, you're in a world of trouble, guys. So it hurts, it gets infected, you don't want cuts on your hand. So a good pair of leather work gloves are a worthwhile investment. So. The next, the second kind of glove that you most likely were gonna want is a good pair of Mechanics Worth gloves. This is two different options. These are the Fast Fit. Um, it's just got stretch material in here. You slide your hand in, no zippers or uh, uh, straps on the back. This is a Mechanics. This is the original Mechanics wear. Um, this one has the Velcro closure on the back here. This one is the fast fit option. Uh, in my bug out bag, this is the pair that I have dedicated to my bug out bag is this pair right here. This pair actually is in my EDC everyday bag um, that I carry. And this is the fast fit kind. They are soft uh, on the uh, insoles, the palms, no leather or anything like that. But these are gonna be good for just everyday tasks that you don't wanna mess your hands up. You're carrying stuff. <clears throat> excuse me, you're doing your cooking, you know, you don't want to have your hand just to grab a hot uh, canteen cup off the fire, or if you're doing anything on the fire and you want to just protect your hands a little bit, your regular gloves are going to do a great deal. But really consider investing in a good pair of leather gloves and a good pair of mechanics gloves. Again, these were about 12 bucks at Lowe's. Those were 15 bucks. These were 15 bucks. Both of these I got off of Amazon. So... Those are options, gloves. And like I said, guys, the reason mechanics gloves are very popular, they're inexpensive, they're well-made, and I'll tell you right now, if the Navy SEALs use mechanics gloves, then they're damn good enough for you and I. So, gloves, get a couple pairs, have them. Next option up is my mini sewing kit, which uh, is somewhere around here. Okay, it's right here. So this is a survival sewing and repair kit. Um, I picked this stuff up at Amazon. It does come in a lock sack. So it's really nice. It's got a whole bunch of stuff in here. So you get one mil spec, uh, five by four lock sack, one two and three quarter by quarter inch needle holder, needle threader, metal thimble, Fresnel lens magnifier, you have a number seven needle, an 18 darner needle, a 16 darner needle, heavy duty straight pins, assorted buttons, assorted safety pins, uh, thread number 69 heavy duty. And you also get durable weatherproof matches, two commercial grade ties, one military approved derma safe knife, little flip knife thing, uh, bonded Kevlar thread 50 pound test, brass snare and repair wire, and a type 1A mil spec utility cord. That's that right there, you can see it. And you get a little roll of duct tape. So this I picked up off of Amazon for I think about 10 bucks. It's got everything you'll really ever need in a survival sewing kit. You even get a snare wire in there, it's crazy. In a nice little lock sack, it's a thick material. It's not gonna rip on you, so it's a good item to have. I'm not the best at sewing, but if I had to sew up a pair of pants, I could make it work and get her done. So a sewing kit is a really awesome option to have. I highly recommend you get one in your kit. This takes up no space, weighs nothing. All right guys, so next item up is toilet paper. So this is one full roll of Charmin. This is like the double size roll one. 
that I took the uh, centerpiece out of and I squished it down. I threw it in this uh, vacuum bag and I vacuumed all the air out of it to make it nice and thin and compact. So it's good for storing in your bag. It doesn't take up as much room as a full roll would and it's worthwhile. Again, dude, it's toilet paper. You don't wanna be wiping with leaves. Get some damn toilet paper. Next item up, we have our figure nine carabiner. This is just a simple night eyes figure nine carabiner. I picked this up at Walmart for a whopping five bucks. Night eyes is a good brand. So I really never had to use this, but it's nice. You can hook this onto something. You run your rope around here, around there, and it just has these teeth. So it grits in there and it gets a good hold. So then you can just hook this onto something and you've got your rope secured. So figure nine carabiner. Then I have three just regular non-climbing carabiners. So you can use these to hang, use your rope, hook your rope on here. You can hook this to stuff to make your tents with. But I just have three of those in here for any purpose uses. You can use this to hook stuff to your bag if you have to. So three regular carabiners, non-climbing, and one figure nine carabiner. There we go, moving along. Next up is small particle dust masks. So as you know, I have little uh, face masks in both of my medical kits. These are small particle dust masks. These are specifically for uh, woodworking and fiberglass work. So they deal with keeping very small particles out of your uh, nose and mouth. So this is a really nice option. This is just a two pack. Pick these up at Walmart for like a buck something. So good to have in case anything's out in the air. God forbid, you know, anything else happens, you've got a way to at least keep your air somewhat filtered in your uh, bag. So particle dust masks. All right, sunglasses. This is a uh, Revision Military by Rothko. This is just the, the, the case. I actually don't like their brand very much. I prefer these. These are actually just some no-name uh, motorcycle riding glasses. The reason I like them is they have, you can see, this is the yellow pair. They have the gasket seal for around your eyes. So when you put these on, it does create a bit of a seal like a pair of goggles would. So if you got a lot of dust blowing, you can use these and it'll do more than just a pair of sunglasses to keep that out of your eyes. So I have a light pair and I have a dark pair. This way during the day, uh, dusk or even in the evening at night, if you need to keep uh, your eyes covered, you can go to a light color as opposed to the dark color. So, and these both fit in here just nice. Or they did when I had them in there. Now I gotta figure out how to get them back in. <laughs> get in there. There we go. This does take a little bit of bulk up, but this normally rides right at the top, uh, on top of everything in my bag so that they don't get squished and I can access them really quickly if I need them. So the next item up on here is a good folding knife. Now, I've already seen one folding knife. I had a folding knife in my mini tool kit. Uh, this is another one. This is the Ontario Rat 1. I absolutely love this knife. This is by far one of the best inexpensive knives you can get. Super fast deployment, great lockup, Excellent ergonomics. It is a little bit heavier. It's a little over five ounces. You get a three and a half inch blade and you have a five inch handle. So you get a good purchase on the, uh, the knife and it gives you ability to use this and uh, be confident with it. The nice thing about this is it has a great pocket clip, four way multi-directional pocket clip, right or left handed tip up, right or left handed tip down carry. Excellent option. You can get these knives for about $30 on Amazon. There are several colors. Pick the one you want. So a good folding knife. Now this is, again, this is the third folding knife in my system. You saw the first one in my mini tool kit. You've seen this one with rides in the front pocket of my bag with other smaller items. And there's also a third folding knife, which would be the knife that I have on me as my EDC knife for the day. So three folding pocket knives, good quality pocket knives in my system at all times. So that's another option for you. And we'll be right back because my camera's about to die. 
All right guys, so we only have a couple items left on the items not in my mini kit for this video. So let's kind of move into uh, this little guy right here. Let me zoom in here so we can really talk about that. This is a, uh, it's called a Rescue Me. I actually have this hanging on the outside of my pack. This way if I need it, I can access it quickly. I also have a, uh, just a little, I think a little 10 lumen twist light here. A little nano stream by Streamlight that I have connected to it just for ease of use and if I need to get into my pack and it's dark, I have just a little extra light. Again, more redundancy. So this is called a Rescue Me. It has a rope and clothing cutter and a glass breaker on it. So you just pull and this comes off and you can access the, the clothing cutter. So you can just literally hook this through clothes and cut right through it. You can pull your cord and cut it out. Uh, this is just really nice if you have to emergency extract someone from a vehicle or from their car you can uh, just cut their seat belt without cutting them or cut uh, an article of clothing off them if you have to. This has a, uh, a glass breaker in it. It's spring loaded so what you do is you just push this up against the glass so if this was the glass and you put it up and push in and the little piston in there slams a little piece of metal into the glass and it shatters it. So you can uh, open glass if you had to break glass. So these things, you can catch them online. I think I got this one on Amazon for six or seven dollars. This are These are really cheap. These are only a few dollars. So I just have this uh, hooked on the outside of my pack. This way, if I need it, I can get to it easily. And I have a rescue cutter, a glass breaker, and a light if I should need them. So it's a really great option for your bug out bag. Doesn't take up any space, they weigh nothing, and they're only a couple of dollars. So next up, we've got light sticks, glow sticks. These are just the uh, ones I picked up at, there we go, the uh, snap light. It's a 12 hour green. They're about six inches long in here. I got four of them, they come in packs of two. They're only a couple of dollars, so not super expensive. But like I said, these are really nice if you need to do any signaling. They were a little bit big to keep in my comm kit, so I actually keep them just in the bag, stuffed onto the side by themselves, um, just because of the size of them. If I maybe consider, might want to invest in a couple of smaller ones I can keep in my comm pouch. So that may be something I'll add later. But for right now, I've got four of these. Uh, these are really good. You can crack them. It'll help light the area at night if you don't have your lights out or if you're trying to keep a little more low key. They're good for uh, signaling with at night. This color will definitely stand out in the dark. So a good option, but some uh, snap lights, glow sticks, always good to have. And we got two items left, and these are really kind of necessities. So we've got bug spray and sunblock. This is a uh, copper tone sport. This is SPF 80. I mean, this is heavy duty. So this will definitely take care of you. Um, this will be in a bag, taped up in a bag, just like my, uh, my bug spray is. This is just the repellent uh, lemon eucalyptus deep free. I've just got it uh, wrapped up in a Ziploc baggie and taped to keep it from leaking or anything like that because the last thing you want is this getting everywhere all over your gear. But I'll tell you right now, this is a nice big bottle of bug spray. This will keep the uh, the insects and the uh, mosquitoes off of you. It says up to uh, six hours, so every six hours you're going to have to reapply this. That's why I wanted a nice big bottle, not one of those little tiny small ones. I don't want to get eaten alive out there. And of course, sunblock. This will keep you from uh, getting burned out in the sun, especially here in Arizona. In the summer when it's 115 degrees outside, man, sunblock is, uh, is a guy's best friend. So, all right, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. This is video four. We covered a lot of stuff here. We covered food, water, uh, water purification, shelter, and all the uh, miscellaneous items that I have in my gear. Uh, the last video, video 5, will be coming shortly, and we will be going over uh, weapons and clothing. Um, so that will be the last in the series. So as always, I want to thank you for uh, getting through all these videos with me. As always, Semper Fi, and have a good day. So you best not cross that line. If you want this gun, you got to come through us and take it. One shot at a time.